Thank you. Could I please ask those uh, visitors in the public gallery who are leaving the chamber to please do so uh, quickly and quietly, because in fact we are now going to resume our business. Thank you very much indeed. The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 8765 in the name of Emma Harper on World Asthma Day, 2nd May 2023. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those members who would wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons and I call on Emma Harper to open the debate around seven minutes please Ms Harper. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the opportunity to lead this vitally important debate to recognise that World Asthma Day took place on the 2nd of May 2023 and it had a theme this year of asthma care for all. I thank members from across the Chamber, all parties in fact, who supported my motion allowing the debate to go ahead. And I also thank Asthma and Lung UK Scotland for its policy office and its policy officer Gareth Brown for the briefing and for all they do to support those with asthma and their families are included in that as well. In particular, as co-convener of the Lung Health Cross Party Group with my colleague Alexander Stewart, MSP, I also thank all involved in the Cross Party Group. We have carried out a lot of work relating to asthma in the past and the input from clinicians, asthma support groups and those living with asthma, like Asthma and Lung UK Ambassador Olivia Fulton, is absolutely invaluable. It is worth noting that Olivia, who thought she could never participate in sport because she has quite severe asthma, she is now playing wheelchair rugby and she is absolutely loving it. Presiding officer, as my motion indicates, World Asthma Day is organised by the Global Initiative for Asthma, a World Health Organisation collaborative founded in 1993. Asthma is a very common long-term lung condition, and in the UK, 5.4 million people have asthma. That's one in every 12 adults and one in every 11 children. In Scotland, 360,000 adults have and around 72,000 children have an asthma diagnosis. And people with asthma often have sensitive, inflamed airways. Asthma symptoms can come and go. Sometimes people will not have symptoms for weeks or months at a time. Asthma needs to be treated every day, even if you feel well, to lower the risk of symptoms and asthma exacerbations and attacks. The most common symptoms of asthma are coughing, wheezing, so it's a whistling sound when you breathe, breathlessness and chest tightness. And as a nurse, when I looked after people, sometimes they would describe that it felt like a brick was weighing down on their chest and made it really difficult to breathe. Experiencing one or more of these symptoms could mean you have asthma. And uh, anyone experiencing symptoms should speak to their GP practice as soon as possible. Um, there are nurse specialists in asthma care and respiratory medicine in many of our GP practices, so there are some great experts out there. Presiding officer, there are lots of things that can make asthma worse, but not everyone will be affected by the same things. Finding out what sets off your symptoms, whether it's colds and viruses, pets, pollen, pollution, house dust, mites or stress, means that... It, that you can work out ways to avoid the triggers if possible. There are certain stages in your life that might affect your asthma too. For example, some women find that hormonal changes at puberty, pregnancy or menopause can affect their asthma as well. And I know there is current research underway that's really looking at the issues that face women with asthma and whether it's exacerbated or not, depending on puberty, pregnancy and menopause, as I've mentioned. The best way to cope with your asthma triggers is to always take your preventer inhaler as prescribed, even when you feel well. And how serious asthma is varies from person to person. There are different types of asthma too. Someone with severe asthma, which affects around 5% of all people with asthma, can have symptoms most of the time and find them really hard to control. But we have new biological medicines now that target the processes that cause inflammation, and these meds are helping as well. Asthma can kill. It is serious and it needs continued action. Presiding officer, as my motion states, Asthma and Lung UK Scotland carried out a survey which showed that only 25.4% of people with asthma said that they received all the elements of basic asthma care. And part of how we can address this is through ensuring that people have their own personalised asthma action plan and that they are being reviewed at appropriate times. 
Correct inhaler technique is key, and up to a third of people with asthma aren't using their inhaler correctly. That was noted when we did some research ahead of the debate. People with asthma who are unable to use their inhaler correctly are at an increased risk of poor asthma control, potentially resulting in an attack which may lead to the patient being or the person being hospitalised. In conversations with my, my go-to person, Gary MacDonald, who is a community pharmacist who specialises in asthma, um, Gary said that for most people, they can have their inhaler technique checked at their community pharmacy. And the community pharmacists are often the only healthcare professionals that people actually see. And recently, I hosted a lung health um, event in Parliament for the two years of the Respiratory Care Action Plan. And I met Paul Wilson, who has had many, many, many hospital admissions for treatment and resuscitation for his poorly controlled asthma. His asthma improved when his inhaler technique improved. And he has had zero further hospital admissions since he had his inhaler technique check and then his other personalised asthma action plan uh, put in place. Um, he's now, uh, he's now uh, given back to the NHS by training to be a nurse, and hopefully Paul will be a respiratory nurse. So that is a, a good news story, actually, that we've heard about the work that community pharmacists can do and supporting people. So inhaler technique is part of the personalised action plan for your asthma control, and I'd be interested in how this how uh, personalised asthma action plans and how inhaler technique is being communicated to patients as it's absolutely necessary, and whether the Scottish Government would consider further awareness raising efforts in order to support this. And following lobbying from the cross party group, presiding officer, the Scottish Government launched the Respiratory Care Action Plan. 2021-2026. The plan sets out the vision for driving improvement in prevention, diagnosis, care, treatment and support of people living with respiratory conditions in Scotland. And it identifies five key priorities for respiratory care and is intended to be an enabling document which is driving continuous improvement. And one of the key areas the plan focuses on is for asthma. And it mentions pulmonary rehabilitation. The evidence shows that PR has beneficial effects in patients with asthma at any stage of the disease, improving exercise capacity, asthma control, quality of life and reducing wheezing, anxiety, depression and bronchial inflammation. But many patients report waiting lists of up to 18 months to access PR referrals and appointments. So I would again I would ask the Minister whether targeted support could be considered to improve waiting times both for pulmonary rehabilitation but also for asthma referrals as requested by Asthma and Lung UK Scotland. Presiding officer, there is a link between asthma and inequality as well, and we know that people from the most deprived areas of Scotland are much more likely to receive an asthma diagnosis. And managing an, a variable lifelong condition with complex treatments like inhaler, inhalers is hard enough, and managing asthma while juggling multiple jobs, family responsibilities and financial pressures is even harder. So I welcome the Scottish Government's commitment to tackling health inequalities, but it is important to ensure that good quality housing, sound state welfare support and good air quality are key component, co components of achieving health equality. Presiding officer, in closing, asthma is a serious health condition and we all need to ensure people are aware of the signs and the symptoms and that they are taking all the action possible to support people who are diagnosed. We must ensure that the right inhaler for the right patient is, is that, that's the, the one of the ways forward. But importantly, we need to know how people use their inhaler properly. So I look forward to hearing other members' contributions, presiding officer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Harper. I now call David Torrance to be followed by Sanjish Kohani. Mr Torrance. Thank you, presiding officer. I am very grateful to Emma Harper for securing this debate today and providing us with the opportunity to mark World Asthma Day 2023 which took place last month. This global initiative, supported by the World Health Organisation, was themed Asthma Care for All. It is a theme that holds immense significance for Scotland, a country where an estimated 360,000 people, including 72,000 children, are diagnosed with asthma. Asthma is more than just a chronic health condition. It is a challenge that touches every aspect of a person's life. Their ability to play, learn and even work it impacts not only on those who are diagnosed, but also their families, schools and communities. We must see this not just as a health issue,
but as a social one that demands a collective attention and action. Despite its widespread prevalence, asthma remains a misunderstood condition. Society often underestimates the severity of asthma, not fully comprehending, but uncontrolled asthma can lead to life-threatening attacks. The COVID pandemic has highlighted the severity of respiratory conditions and has shone a spotlight on prevention and treatment. Over 80,000 people in Scotland with respiratory conditions, including asthma, were asked to shield at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, the largest group of people within the shielding list. With proper diagnosis, appropriate treatment and effective management, people with asthma can lead active, healthy lives. I would like to acknowledge the admirable efforts of the Scottish Government's Respiratory Care Action Plan, which aims to improve prevention, diagnose, treatment and care and self-management of asthma and other lung conditions like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and bronchitis. These comprehensive efforts are geared towards enhancing the quality of life of those affected by conditions and reducing the burden on our health care system. However, reports about access to basic asthma care are start reading. The theme this year of World's Asthma Day, Asthma Care for All, speaks volumes about a shared commitment and collective aspirations. I know that the Scottish Government and our health ministers are committed to working with people living with asthma to better understand the barriers of accessing support. In my constituency, we are fortunate to have the fantastic Breathe Easy Fife. We provide a support network for people living with any kind of lung condition, as well as their families and carers. From social activities, exercise sessions to education and information, their invaluable support helps people self-manage their condition, while invaluable peer support for those who understand what it is like to be breathless help people live with a condition rather than just suffer from it. We cannot underestimate the impact of cost of living crisis on our constituents' health. According to a survey undertaken by Asthma and Lung UK, 93% of people in Scotland with lung conditions, like asthma, have made significant changes to their lives in response to a cost of living crisis. One of three of these surveys say that their health is worsening as they cut back on food and heating. No household should be faced with these difficult decisions. We must also turn our attention to the environment around us. There is increasing evidence linking air pollution to a worsening of asthma symptoms, with children being particularly vulnerable. We cannot talk about asthma prevention and care without addressing the need for cleaner air and healthier environments. Poor air quality can cause asthma in children and exacerbate their existing conditions and limit their ability to enjoy the simple pleasures of childhood. The role that clean air plays as a narrative cannot be overstated. Our children breathe at a faster rate than adults, but developing lungs absorb more air per unit body weight, making them susceptible to airborne pollutions. Our children deserve to grow up in a safer environment, but we must commit to delivering this for them. Recognising World Asthma Day prompts us to focus our collective consciousness on the health issues of immense global and national relevance. To provide asthma care for all, we need to face the challenges head-on. We need to address the stark disparities in access to health care, the geographical variations, asthma prevalence and the gaps in public awareness about this condition. Our approach must be multifaceted in integrating prevention, early diagnosis, effective treatment and long-term management of asthma. In conclusion, President Officer, I would like again, once again to thank Emma Harper for bringing us forward this debate and allow us to renew our dedication, rekindle our de determination and continue our journey towards a world free from constraints of asthma. Thank you, Mr Torrance. I now call Sanish Gohani to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Dr Gohani. I wish to draw uh, members' attention to my register of interest as a practicing NHS GP uh, and thank Emma Harper for bringing today's members' business to the Chamber. And we really need to double down on our efforts to raise awareness about a condition that affects millions of lives worldwide, asthma, a chronic respiratory disease which knows no boundaries. It demands our attention, not just on World Asthma Day, when pollen counts are sky high. And this is why I'm purposely outside today to highlight that despite the glorious weather, lots of people suffer from asthma and it's made worse by the pollen that is going on at the moment. According to Asthma and Lung UK, around 370,000 spots suffer. That's about one in 15. Uh, and it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't really matter about your age or race or your background. And it robs individuals of their ability to breathe freely. In 2021, 96 Scots died from this condition. 67% were women. 
And these aren't numbers. These are real people with dreams, aspirational, uh, and, and loved ones, and they mourn their loss. We have a responsibility to strive for better treatments, research, and resources to improve management of this condition. And through concerted effort, the mortality rate uh, can reduce, and we can get it down to zero if people use their inhalers and get the asthma reviews. We need a brighter future. I also want to address one of the leading causes of vigorous exacerbation, and that's smoking. And tobacco smoke is a known trigger for attacks. It's crucial to educate and support individuals in their journey to quit smoking. But we also must create smoke-free environments to promote smoking cessation programs and have healthier environments. I'm calling on the Scottish Government to also take decisive action to make it easier for patients to switch from traditional asthma inhalers to dry powder alternatives. We have a duty to explore sustainable solutions for managing this chronic condition. And dry powder inhalers, or DPIs, offer a green alternative compared to their commonly used propellant-based counterparts. And DPIs do not release harmful gases into the atmosphere, so reduces the carbon emissions that contributes to a cleaner and healthier planet. However, to bring about this change, effective communication is crucial, and the Scottish Government must prioritise education and awareness campaigns to inform patients of the benefits of dry powder inhalers. To provide accessible information to healthcare professionals, asthma clinics, and patients themselves, we can dispel any misconceptions and encourage the transition to more sustainable and user-friendly options. Let us strive for a Scotland where environmental responsibility and a patient well-being can go hand in hand. Let us use World Asthma Day as a catalyst for change, which together we can raise awareness, advocate for improved treatment and work towards preventing asthma-related deaths. Let's empower individuals with asthma to engage their conditions effectively and promote a world where breathing is a right, not a privilege. Together, we can shape the future where asthma management is both effective and sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kohani. And I now call Jackie Bailey to be followed by Alexandra Stewart. Ms. Bailey. Um, Presiding officer, let me start with an apology um, for not having a leafy backdrop for my contribution today. Um, uh, Presiding officer, let me start by thanking Emma Harper for securing this debate about World Asthma Day 2023 and also compliment her on the content of her speech. The theme this year is asthma care for all, but the statistics tell us that just 35% of Scots with asthma actually receive the three components of basic asthma care that they require. The Scottish Government's Respiratory Care Action Plan was introduced in 2021, but there has been little progress made. Scotland has one of the highest respiratory death rates in Europe, at 137 people per 100,000 and waiting times for essential respiratory rehabilitation in some health board areas are over a year long. So we clearly can do better. One in five Scots have a lung condition, but a lack of decent funding and a lack of workforce planning to meet patients' needs has actually resulted in the lowest levels of access to care since 2013. Unfortunately, the data does show that the Scottish Government is not giving lung conditions like asthma the priority they need. And I am ever hopeful that the new minister will correct that. Surveys carried out by Asthma and Lung UK consistently find that Scotland fares worse than the rest of the UK for basic asthma care. Now, it is dis depressing to note that just 11% of those who responded reported that their asthma care is actually improving compared with previous years. So that lack of basic care has consequences. In Scotland, that contributes to over 6,000 emergency hospital admissions each year. It's the cause of around 100 asthma-related deaths, as we heard from Sandish Gulhani, two-thirds of which are women. This places undue strain on an already in crisis NHS, just because of a lack of access to something as simple as an annual asthma action plan. So in a nation like Scotland in 2023, it should not be acceptable that hundreds of lives are lost each year because of a condition 
that is actually well understood. We also need to recognise, as Emma Harper did, that there are significant healthcare inequalities when it comes to asthma. An analysis from Asthma and Lung UK showed that women are almost twice as likely to die from an asthma attack than men. Data from NHS Scotland reveals that those in the most deprived households are more likely to live with asthma and have more asthma attacks, but they are also two to three times more likely to require an emergency admission for asthma. So it's clear that a one-size-fits-all approach doesn't work. And I would encourage the Scottish Government to invest in better research to identify new treatments, make better use of existing treatments to both save women's lives and address levels of asthma that are triggered by things like housing conditions or living closer to areas of higher air pollution. I'm happy to give way. Emma Harp. Thank you very much, Jackie Bailey. I will be really, really quick. Um, one of the things during the pandemic, my sisters are a respiratory nurse consultant, so one of the things that they did during the pandemic was move pulmonary rehab to be online, and that's something that they've found that is one of the innovations that's taken forward. So would Jackie Bailey welcome that PR can now be delivered in various forms, face-to-face, -face, online? Jackie Bailey. Yes, anything that gets the service available to people that requires it um, should be welcome. So, so I very much welcome what your sister is doing um, in her service as well. But to conclude, um, the Scottish Government needs to outline how they're going to invest in training, how they're going to invest in recruitment in those rehabilitation services, publish a progress report on the achievements and failings of the Respiratory Care Action Plan as it reaches its halfway into its five-year term. And I hope that the new Public Health Minister, Jenny Minto, will work to ensure that the action plan is not something that simply languishes on a shelf. Health boards need to be supported to rebuild services and deliver the outcomes people with lung conditions like asthma need. The 368,000 people in Scotland living with asthma deserve more than warm words from this parliament on World Asthma Day. They need real action and they need it now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Bailey. And I now call Alexander Stewart. Mr Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As my fellow co-convener for the Cross-Party Group on Lung Health, I congratulate Emma Harper uh, for securing this debate and all the work that she does uh, on this cause. World Asthma Day is organised by the Global Initiative for Asthma, a World Health Organisation, and as you've already heard, each May uh, raises awareness on asthma worldwide. For this year's event, we've also heard about Asthma Care for All has been the theme, which perfectly fits uh, and with the, the sentiments of the debate, but also with the main aims of our cross-party group. Indeed, only recently, uh, the cross-party group highlighted breaking, uh, groundbreaking research into women with asthma and the effects of oestrogen on that condition. Uh, our scientists and our secretariat, uh, Asthma Lung UK Scotland, have also highlighted that women are more likely to suffer asthma uh, and severe symptoms uh, are, are chronic to that. Uh, they also experience significant worsening of symptoms around menstruation and times of the month, uh, and that potentially puts them in a very dangerous situation, uh, presiding officer. Uh, and research is being undertaken, but that's still quite patchy. But I look forward to seeing what does come through uh, when that is established uh, and solutions are found. The charity also works with additional collaborative organisations such as Ash Scotland in order to prevent, uh, and we've heard today about smoking uh, and the smoking sensation programme that's required. Required. This is uh, very important because the, the mass media uh, campaign that's been put out to achieve by 2034 to target of less than 5% smoking in Scotland has to be worked on and achieved. And I play my part and commend that as this Parliament's smoking sensation champion. We also talked about and has been heard already today about the respiratory care plan action uh, and that uh, has very much uh, been the case that the government have uh, worked hard uh, to ensure that and, and only last month uh, on the 25th of April uh, we had the cross-party group did have uh, members, guests and fellow members attending uh, the parliamentary uh, reception uh, which was looking at the respiratory care action plan two years on. 
uh, at that event we heard from a number of speakers uh, and entertainers about their uh, situation and we also know uh, uh, that the, we yet have to hear uh, the latest recent progress report from the Scottish Government about what it's achieving and how the plan is progressing and the areas that require to be looked at. As the Scottish Government heads to the halfway point of its session of this five-year uh, parliamentary term, uh, we've also heard uh, from the head of uh, dedicated Joseph Carter, uh, who highlighted and reported that uh, whilst things were challenging before the pandemic, things have got much worse since. And we've also heard today that only 25% of people with asthma are receiving the three components of basic asthma care, that being their annual review, the inhaler technique, and the asthma action plan. And that needs to be looked at because we already know uh, that we are, are suffering in Scotland uh, as one of the worst uh, with highest areas of respiratory care uh, uh, that people are affected by. Uh, and that people with COPD, only 14.5% uh, of patients are receiving the five fundamentals of COPD that they require. However, through the charity's Freedom of Information request to Scotland's health boards, I was very disappointed but not surprised, presiding officer, that within my own region, Forth Valley, uh, uh, are still waiting between 12 to 18 months for respiratory treatment. Uh, and despite the campaign that goes forward by the excellent group of uh, Breathe Easy Clack Manager in my own region, uh, they are still looking for and wish for things to happen. So in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, throughout all CPD and all of the issues we're talking about today, I commend Asthma Lung UK uh, Scotland for what they are doing and also you know, talk about what Joseph indicated, that they wait for and, and there's a lack of respiratory care and lung disease across the country. It's vitally important that this situation must be turned around and urgently for the sake of all those individuals suffering respiratory uh, patients uh, within Scotland because they deserve that, nothing less from this government and this parliament. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Mr Stewart. And I now call Jenny Minto, Minister, to respond to the debate around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Presiding Officer. <clears throat> Frog in my throat. <clears> throat> Presiding Officer, I would like to thank Emma Harper for lodging this important motion and welcome the opportunity to respond on behalf of the Scottish Government this afternoon. I know how much work Emma Harper does regarding asthma and respiratory diseases and also the work of the cross-party group uh, she co-chairs with Alexander Stewart. I had the pleasure of joining them at one of their roundtable meetings one evening. And it was great to hear the choir from, um, from Leith and across Edinburgh sing as part of that event. I'd also like to thank my fellow members from across the chamber for contributing to this important debate. Um, there was a number of questions asked, which I will try and cover. If not, then I'm happy to discuss further with members. <clears throat> <clears throat> I would also like to put on record my thanks to these, these, those supporting people living with asthma across Scotland including in our NHS Scotland, public services and third sector organisations such as Asthma Lung UK. It is this collaborative working that enables progress to be made. The theme, as many others have said, of this May's World Asthma Day was Asthma Care for All. This resonates with our commitment to tackle health inequalities. We know that these, those living in poverty in Scotland are much more likely to develop a lung condition. We also know that care and treatment for conditions like asthma is not always as accessible as it could be. I recognise the difficulties um, faced by those living with respiratory conditions such as asthma and I am committed to improving services across Scotland to meet their needs through the implementation of a respiratory care action plan. This plan, published as others have said in 2021, sets out key priority areas for driving improvement in the prevention, diagnosis, care, treatment and support for people living with a range of respiratory conditions. The Scottish Respiratory Advisory Committee oversees the implementation of the plan. Its membership includes healthcare professionals, third sector groups and other national policy teams. And I'm very grateful for their input and leadership. Importantly, it has engaged with these, those living with respiratory conditions to ensure that their voices remain at the heart of its implementation. I thought the point raised by um, Emma Harper regarding inhaler technique um, is, is really important and that is um, included in the draft Scottish Respiratory Quality Prescribing Guidelines. As part of this plan, uh, as part, a key part of this plan is ensuring early and accurate diagnosis of asthma. 
With an early diagnosis, people are able to have much more opportunity to explore self-management techniques and are more likely to avoid the need for additional intensive treatments. We are working closely with po colleagues in primary care as well as specialist respiratory services to identify improvements in current diagnostic pathways. Now, we recognise um, the benefits of pul pulmonary rehab for people living with lung conditions. We have a commitment within our respiratory care action plan and a working group has been established. Um, and we are working with physiotherapists and other key clinical staff from across Scotland to improve access. Another key area of focus is ensuring a, pos a positive transition from child to adult services, which David Torrance touched upon. We want to ensure that young people living with asthma receive the best possible support as they progress into adulthood by helping them to gain a greater understanding of their condition and how to manage it. A best practice document due to be published this summer aims to improve the consistency of transition services for young people across Scotland. Several other large-scale improvement projects are being progressed in collaboration with key stakeholders. For example, the Centre for Sustainable Delivery has a specific respiratory speciality delivery group which supports improvements in processes, pathways and innovation. And they are currently developing a severe asthma pathway. Public Health Scotland are also supporting us to enhance data collection so that we have a deeper understanding of people living with asthma and other respiratory conditions to enable us to undertake improvement work ac accordingly. So funding um, has been initiated this year to develop a much-awaited respiratory audit programme. I also want to touch briefly on dry powder inhalers. These are included in the quality prescribing guidelines, guidance, driving better quality care as the main aim and understanding that many people find DPIs easier to use. However, they may not be suitable for all and that's why uh, inhaler technique and education, as Emma Harper has touched upon, is so important. And um, Jackie Bailey, I know, raised a few points um, but I'd like to just note that the progress report has been shared with all respiratory stakeholders. Um, David Torrance also highlighted um, some of the areas that we need to focus on, as did others, on prevention. And we have a number of approaches that aim to reduce the impact of factors such as air pollution, smoking and cold homes, all of which are closely linked to the onset of respiratory condition. The Scottish Government takes the issue of air pollution very seriously. Our vision for Scotland is to have the cleanest air in Europe and we are committed to protecting the public from the effects of poor quality air as soon as possible, as the First Minister referenced in First Minister's questions today. For example, the introduction of low emission zones in our four largest cities in 2022 was a key initiative in further improving urban air quality. And I was really pleased yesterday to meet with Healthy Air Scotland outside the Parliament. And Alexander Stewart uh, noted exposure to cigarette smoke directly or secondhand is another well-known risk factor. We aim to have a tobacco-free Scotland by lowering smoking rates in our communities to 5% or less by 2034. And we want to see a generation of young people who do not want to smoke. Our Refresh Tobacco Action Plan will be published in the autumn this year and renews our focus on meeting our ambitious 2034 target. As we begin to understand the potential harms of vaping, we're also considering next steps in this area. Uh, this is an involving issue and we want to better identify ways to prevent children and young people vaping as a lifestyle choice. Of course, none of this important work would be possible without the dedicated clinicians providing asthma services in our NHS. I note the creation of an international coalition of respiratory nurses and hope that this provides a further opportunity for sharing good practice and learning in addition to our own Scottish Respiratory Nurse Forum. And perhaps Emma Harper's sister um, can be involved in that as well. NHS staffing levels are at a historic high following 10 years consecutive growth, but we do recognise the pressures that boards and frontline staff are experiencing. We are continuing to invest in international recruitment to increase capacity in the short to medium term, but are also exploring more innovative solutions such as broadening the remit of respiratory physiotherapists and other allied healthcare professions. Presiding officer, to conclude, I would like to close by reiterating this government's commitment to ensuring that everyone living with asthma in Scotland receives the best possible care and support. Whilst we have made progress, I do recognise there is still much more we can do. 
My thanks again to go to all the members of this chamber who have contributed to this important debate today and most importantly to those working across health and social care to deliver these commitments. Thank you, Minister. And that concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting until 2pm. Thank you. <laughs>